Hey guys, it's Ashley and welcome to one of my Pretty Little Liars recap for season 6, episode 2, Songs of Innocence. And now this episode I felt like was more of a filler episode, kinda a downer from last week's episode, but I kinda appreciate what the writer of this episode was trying to do. I think it was Joseph Doherty that wrote this episode. No offense, I, he's not gonna watch this, but like... It was good, but I feel like it could have been a lot better. <laughs> yeah, like I didn't hate it, but I didn't love it either. So you know what I'm saying? Yeah, the only like answers that we kinda got was Sarah got hit in the head the night that she ran away. When Emily asks her, oh did you see who hit you in the head? Did you see who grabbed you? She kinda went like, oh I'm tired and she just didn't want to answer the question. So I think definitely she knows something maybe she doesn't know exactly who it is but she knows something that she doesn't want to say and this sarah harvey girl she's really really weird she seems like she's not all there you know i i mean i would assume that you know being in the dollhouse for three years but it's like or almost three years yeah i don't know if the girls should trust her i don't even know if she really is sarah harvey to begin with i'm gonna lean that she is because we don't need any more questions <laughs> at the moment. But yeah, I don't know. She's a little strange. The other answer was what happened to the girls while they were in the rooms. That they got shocked. There would be that loud beeping noise. And they would have to... There would be a countdown. And they would have to pick which one of the girls to get shocked. And Hannah also mentioned that Charles played games with them. Like truth or dare questions who deserves water her me like that yeah that was that's really cool especially the shocking part like whoever is behind this twisted and sick and it's not andrew i don't believe it's andrew other thing that happened in this episode um it just kind of revolved around the girls healing process how they're dealing with all this trauma mona wasn't in this episode which i thought was really strange i mean she was held in this dollhouse longer than the girls and you would think they would show her you know like that was a little weird unless they're gonna show her in the next episode her process i don't know but i want to know how how that happened you know her faking her death and how all that went on so hopefully we get some answers for that i just hope we get answers about all of that mona like that video was obviously staged, but who was that throwing her all around? Was that Mike? Uh, you know, like questions about that whole thing about Nona faking her death. Because she looked pretty dead in that car, but things weren't really adding up to me. That's why I assumed that she wasn't really dead and she, you know, she wasn't. Obviously, she's alive, but... Huh. This whole thing with Emily dealing with her trauma from the dollhouse by stealing her dad's gun from the dad's safe in the basement i believe and her mom gets all mad about it like you're not supposed to be touching the guns without permission or by yourself and she goes to these shooting ranges and she's all upset she's having these back flashes playing in her head while she's like shooting aggressively at the target and her mom catches her the second time and they, she just kind of blows up at Emily and they get into this fight and Emily just breaks down crying like, oh Emily, like she needed to let all that out, you know? Hannah wants to redecorate her room. She's taking all the wallpaper down, moving furniture out of her room and Caleb is helping her do that. The beginning of the episode, I actually tweeted out that the girls should remodel their rooms because it's like a living nightmare, you know, that's too much memories from the dollhouse. And so Hannah did. I don't know about the other girls, but Hannah is like frantically removing everything from her room. Um, and Caleb is just a really good boyfriend, you know, just helping her. There was, there was nice hey love moments, you know, of them cuddling. Arya, she kind of really... She was really upsetting in this episode. It's not really a shocker. <laughs> Arya, she lies to the police. Uh, her and Ella go to the police station. And the lady there asks Arya if she ever saw Andrew there in the dollhouse. And at first she says, no, I didn't see him. 
I just know that it's Andrew because Andrew was always there when something bad happened. I didn't see anyone because the person in the dollhouse was always masked. He changes her story around and says, Oh no, wait, I, I'm sorry, I made a mistake. I did see him once. And you can tell that Ella is giving her a weird look that she knows that Arya is lying. And it wasn't that convincing either. Yeah, what are you doing lying to the police like that? You should know that that will just get you into more deep trouble. But that scene was like, Gah, Arya, why would you do that? Spencer is dealing with sleeping pills addiction, I guess. When she gets home from the hospital, she realizes the doctor forgot to give her sleeping pills. And her mom tells her, oh, I told the doctor to not give you the sleeping pills because we all know you have a problem with that. And so she gets really mad and while she's at Arya's house, she takes one of Arya's pills. Take it, but I guess she steals it. And we see a scene in her room. She's debating whether or not to take it. She's just staring at the pill in her hand. She doesn't take it. She gets interrupted by her mom. It's weird, awkward run-in with Allison and Toby and Toby's new partner, Lorenzo. That was just a really awkward scene. I don't know why they really threw that in there. I don't know why Toby was acting like kind of like bitchy, I guess, towards Allison. There were a few scenes with Lorenzo and Allison, I feel like they're probably gonna be a couple, most likely. I can already see it happening. If I ship them, I don't know, I can't really tell. Um, all I know, Lorenzo looks really older, older, be dating Allison, but I don't know. There's that one scene, Allison asks her dad who's Charles De Laurentiis is. And he's like, what? And you can tell he's hiding something, obviously. And she's like, no, who? And he, he's like, I don't know any Charles De Laurentiis. Or okay, he's hiding something. And even Spencer tells Allison that, that your dad's a liar. Emily walks outside with her dad's army jacket on. I guess she feels protected wearing it. And she sees someone in the shadows, like in the bushes or whatever. And it turns out to be Sarah Harvey. And then she says that she saw Emily's address at the hospital and wanted to see her and she ran away again. No, this Sarah Harvey chick is really, really weird and I don't know if I should trust her or not. Did she really see Emily's address at the hospital? Because I found that really shady. Did anyone else find that shady? Then we, the last scene is Sarah Harvey on Emily's doorstep with Pam. Tara mentions that she deserved to be in that pit this whole time because her mom doesn't really care about her. It was something along those lines. How her mom doesn't even know that she ran away again. Like, who is her mom? She left the hospital and Pam did say that she assumed that was her mom. But who was that really? Like, does she have a mom? Is she pretty? pretending to be someone else she's not like these there's these questions just in my head right now that's not really making sense but Pam says okay I'm gonna call your mom because your mom has to know that you're here and she's like you can try like what is that supposed to mean Sarah and Emily something gonna happen between them because I feel like every time with this show they have some kind of run-in with two characters that's never been together before. They end up dating or something happens. And so I have this weird feeling that something's gonna happen between them. I hope not. Because I don't know if Sarah is good. <laughs> Another random thing that happened that made me really happy is when Emily doesn't really know what to do anymore. She just got home from the shooting range and her mom says, why don't you call Paige? And Emily says that she did call Paige and she told Paige to stay there because she deserves to be happy. J just, the, just because they mentioned Paige, that made me kind of happy. If you don't know, I'm a Paley shipper. Please don't hate on me. And I heard Paige is gonna come back in 6B. And I know 6B is a time jump, so we'll have to see. We'll have to see. I don't know what I'm talking about. What did you guys think? Let me know in the comments below what you thought of that whole episode. 
And I don't know when this recap will be up, but I know it'll be up later than usual since I'm filming this on Wednesday. I am busier, a little busier than usual because I am gonna fly to Oahu um, Friday morning to see my favorite singers of all time, Fifth Harmony in concert. And it's been a dream of mine. And if you follow me on Twitter or been watching my other videos or whatever, you would know that I'm like a hardcore harmonizer and it's been a dream of mine to see them in concert or just for them to come to Hawaii and so I hope I meet them too if not that's okay I would put the cherry on top but just seeing them perform oh make my life you know it just made my life so my uploading schedule will be a little frantic and crazy because I'll be vlogging that as well hope you enjoyed my recap and thanks for all of the subscribers I had like a huge jump in subscribers after uploading my reaction video to last week's episode so thank you if you're a new subscriber that means a lot to me and we're almost to 800 subscribers so yeah okay bye guys peace out